Namaste. Okay, now it's time to take what we've learned so far and to put it into practice because the practice is how you actually realize it. Now, each note of the Vedic scale, as we've mentioned before, has a particular rasa, a particular emotional quality, a spiritual quality. So, because we're using the Tanpura, which represents Aum, as the drone. All the notes, all the tones of the scale, the swaras, are in relationship with Brahman. That's what makes it Vedic. That's what makes the music sacred and spiritual. And it's a fact. This is a kind of sadhana. And just by doing this sadhana, you can realize all the different rasas. It's really amazing. So the sadhana consists of what we call long tones. And they are just that. Just taking each one of the swaras in sequence and then singing it as a long held out tone. Allow me to demonstrate. listening with headphones, you should be able to hear the upper overtones or harmonics. When the note is sung perfectly in tune, the sung note and the drone merge. And you get a phenomenon called sananana. Sananana means what we talked about last time, the sum and difference of the directly produced frequencies manifesting as enhanced harmonics or overtones. And you should hear them like jingling little notes or maybe like the sounds in your inner ear. So let's listen to that again and then I'll do Sariga. Because God is very beautiful. The overtones and the subtones, the difference frequencies generated by the sananana, the function of the inner ear, like we talked about last time, make a very pleasing harmonic arrangement. So sa means Brahman, God, the Absolute. But when you merge with the Absolute, that's self-realization, that's enlightenment. You can tell when you do this exercise correctly because the singer will disappear and there will only be the sound. It's very beautiful. Then Ri, 
means enthusiasm, even aggression. You know? But in this case, it's enthusiasm for self-realization. And of course, ga means friendship, affection, love, non-sexual love. So now let's do ma and pa because they're very interesting. especially on Pa. Of course, Ma represents Shakti and Pa represents Shiva. It's no accident those names are used. <laughs> then the interesting thing about Ma is that acoustically, the root is the upper tone. Although we have the drone, Acoustically, the upper tone, the pa, is the root. In the same way, when we're in material manifestation, although Shiva or Brahman is actually the absolute, the Shakti appears to be dominant. Huh? And in music, this is called the subdominant. There's a good reason for that. <laughs> Saguna Brahman. Shakti is the subdominant, and the dominant is Shiva, Pa. Ah. These notes are very beautiful, these swaras. They're not just notes, <laughs> they're swaras because they're in a proper relationship with the drone. So, this is what distinguishes Vedic music from Western music the tuning. And experiments that we did like 50 years ago <laughs> have proved that this tuning is superior to Western tuning. So then listen to Da and Ni. Mm -hmm. Sometimes ni is better off done in the lower octave. Sa ni. So what I'm suggesting is that you do this exercise as a meditation. 
A meditation on what? Well, a meditation on flowing rasa or spiritual emotion through these swaras. The swaras are beautiful in themselves, but they're even more beautiful when we contemplate the relationships that they represent. Now, I've done the Shuddha Swaras. But these are the uh, major scale. And now we're going to do the Komal and Tivra Swaras. Again, begin with Sa. Sa. It never moves, and it represents Brahman. Re, Komal Re, represents devotion, deep devotion. Komal Ga, which is a very different note than our Western intonation, represents satisfaction. Tivrama, Tivrama means erotic desire and of course pa is achala he never moves komalda represents deep compassion komalni represents desire for others for example desiring others good fortune So, these beautiful tones are for you to practice and meditate on. Sing them over and over again. And you'll find in the beginning it's very difficult to hold the voice steady. That's all right. This is a hard exercise. It's much easier to just sing huh? a tune. But to hold the voice steady for a long time is quite difficult. So this will make you very strong by doing this exercise and will also deepen your consciousness. You'll find that your consciousness changes when you get the note in tune. I had one student, <laughs> this is a long time ago, like 12 years ago, and we had an ashram at that time near Lake Catemaco in Mexico. And uh, he didn't believe me, you know, then why are you singing these tunes all the time, you know? <laughs> and I told him, you try it. 
When you get the sa, just try the sa, huh? When you get it, your consciousness will change and you can feel it. So he tried, it took him about a half an hour. Uh, sa, sa, you know. <laughs> but then he finally got it after half an hour and he came to me and his eyes were really big. <laughs> he said, I think I'm tripping. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's how it should be. That's how it should affect you. So you can trip on these sounds. They will take you to beautiful places. And I'm going to publish two videos after this. It'll be part 5A and part 5B. And the 5A will be for the lower voices, the baritone bass, male voice, um, and the uh, contra or contralto, uh, contra soprano or contralto, uh, female voice. And that'll be in the key of C. And then I'll publish another video with the same background in the key of F. That's for tenors, male tenors, and for female sopranos. And you can practice your tones in relation to those drones. <laughs> so have a good time and let me know uh, how it affects you. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.